Hey guys, welcome back to our continued coverage of uh, Baltimore Comic Con Live. What a fantastic panel. Total horror panel. Uh, apologies to Mr. Han who jumped on at the very end. But uh, hey, you know, that's how it goes when you do a whole show live, guys. So we're going to keep the ball rolling. Our next guest coming up for the next hour, uh, you know him. He's worked in movies uh, in the industry and in visual effects, prop making, model making for over 28 years now. Uh, he's worked on films and television shows, uh, movies like The Hunger Games, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Star Trek, The Walking Dead, Titanic, Batman, just to name a few. He's known around the world uh, on YouTube for his tutorials, teaching cosplayers how to make foam armor props. He's going to spend uh, right about the next uh, 50 to 55 minutes kind of giving you a little bit of a demonstration. Uh, so without further ado, guys, give a massive Baltimore Comic-Con. Welcome to Mr. Evil Ted Smith. Ted? Hey! Nice oh, match, man. Let's go ahead and. Uh... Oh wait, I don't need it. I don't need this. I don't think you need that. Oh, it's right. It's virtual. Sorry, guys. We're virtual this year, Ted. This is awesome. <laughs> Ted, thank, right. thank you so much for being here. Uh, I know what a busy man you are. Inch. I'm sorry, guys. It, being virtual, my dog is being obnoxious. Um, welcome, guys. Hi, guys. How you doing? I'm so glad you guys reached out to me. This has been fun. The one thing about the, um, of course, the pandemic is not being able to go to cons and do things. And then this whole virtual thing started popping up. And I was like, I want to be a part of this. So thanks for reaching out to me, guys. Thank you. Without a doubt, you know, we've been trying to have you on uh, for the past few mainframes, but I mean, you're, you're very, <laughs> very busy guy. I mean, you're, you're an active working uh, prop maker uh, in Hollywood. So, I mean, we're, it's just such a pleasure to have you. Uh, before you start your demonstration, yes, I just want to remind everybody, guys, uh, Evil Ted, you are doing uh, some private meet and greets that people can purchase if they head over to the meet and greet uh, section of this website. Um, so if, if you guys want to really do a deep dive, if you're a cosplayer, uh, definitely go to the meet and greets. Uh, we have a special promo code. If you use the promo code foam guy, F O A M G U Y all one word, you get $10 off uh, your meet and ge greet with evil Ted. It's going to be an hour long deep dive answering all your questions. You can show them your cool props that you guys have made. So definitely take advantage of that over at the meet and greet section. So Ted, what are you going to be what are you going to be working on today? Um, I've been really excited because things inspire me. And uh, uh, I, like most cosplayers, you see something you really dig. And there's this whole big thing, Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, the game is coming out. And it got me really fired up. And I started watching like uh, the, the early uh, like trailers for the game and stuff. And the one thing about the game uh, and all the makers out there is that not a lot of crazy armor stuff. There's some, it's mostly about accents and things on people's faces. And I was really intrigued by that. So I thought... You know something? That'd be something cool to make. So I started making uh, patterns. Uh, I got like four I'm working on and hopefully my plan is I'm rushing to get them done so I'll have them in my shop uh, before the game comes out. But uh, I love the in-game. There's all these enhancements. So I'm making today, we're going to be making a cyber eye enhancement. And I have everything all pre-cut and ready to go. So we're going to do simple uh, foam patterns I've made. Uh, I have them sitting over here. And we're going to do a cyber eye enhancement build today. Awesome. Well, I, I want to go ahead and uh, just cut you loose. Before I do, guys, um, everything you see uh, that Evil Ted's going to be showing you, all of his uh, his patterns, uh, stuff you can get. You've got free patterns on your website. If you head over, yes, to, the, head over to the cosplay page here at BaltimoreComicConLive.com, you'll see uh, buttons for all of Evil Ted's stuff all over the cosplay page. So head over to the cosplay page of Baltimore Comic Con Live. Click on Evil Ted. You can get... I've actually uh, done a lot of your downloads. I did, a, oh, I, did one of your, I did one of your helmet builds. I've done some shoulder builds. So nice. that if, if I can do it, <laughs> Anybody could do it. I, I that, promise you. And that has been my mission. Is that I think people get intimidated when they see a complete costume. They freak out. And it, and if you watch somebody do it step by step, you're like, oh wait a minute, I can do this. It, it, it is it is doable. It really is. It is very doable. So Ted, I'm gonna go. Ahead, I'm gonna hang out in the background, but uh, cut you loose. Uh, oh, we'll be oh, monitoring the chat and all that. But go ahead. Fantastic, please, so guys. All by all means, I can. There's one thing I can do really well is I can take questions and talk while I build. Great. So we'll be monitoring the chat, guys. Uh, put your questions up. We'll throw them on the screen for Evil Ted. So uh, I'll be hanging around in the background. Ted, take it away, man. All right, here you go, guys. Well, sorry for the shaky cam. We're going to switch the camera around real quick so you guys can see what I'm doing. Well, just a minute. Get all set up. Stand by. Oh, oh wait a minute. Sorry. Earthquake. Ted, that's filthy, man. <laughs> you ever do you ever right. clean your cutting board, Ted? You know something. I also I, and guys, right for this, I have pants on, so cut me some slack. You're, right. you're, at least there's one of us. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there we go. Get this all set up. Now I'm bringing you guys a little bit closer. There it is. Great. Let me move some stuff out of the way. 
move my camera so I can see what I'm doing. And oh, sorry, hold on. You can, I'm usually I use another camera, but since we're doing the live stream format thing, so, sorry guys, hold on, it's coming. What you guys are seeing here, these are all some uh, foam pieces I have cut and made. Here, let's slice them around. Oh, dang it, hold on, guys. Justine. That's okay, it's the beauty of live television. Just. This needs to be a little tighter, hold on. Turning, ah, there we go, got it. Okay, what we have here are some pieces, and this is for my cyber eyeball enhancement. And we're gonna put this together today. Um, the fronts and these are all the pieces. So we're gonna start with, put all this stuff aside. Now this pattern, I designed it for the uh, the right eye, but the cool thing about this pattern and with anything, if you flip it, you can make it for the left. So of course, we're gonna grab some contact cement. Now, I got excited when I saw the game and I wanted to make parts and I thought, if you, two millimeter foam is such a great, um, Foam is readily available and it's super inexpensive and it's everywhere. You can go to most craft stores and get it, or you can go to um, cosplay supply places. There's uh, TNT Cosplay Supply, one of my main suppliers of foam. And, um, and if you guys want to go to a local craft store, you can definitely go to Michael's. Now, as you guys can see here, I'm going to apply contact cement to the edges here. This is going to be the eye side here. Now, I designed this with the idea of like possibly in the future putting a light in it. Uh, I don't have any lights today, but we'll definitely, it's something you can do. All right. Um, and I'd like to tell you what, while these guys are drying, let's go ahead and apply glue to some other spots here. This eyeball was not designed to be seen through, but I thought about it. So you could just take a, a brass tube and cut a small hole in the center and you definitely could see through if you wanted to. Ted, what kind of glue do you like using? Uh, I use most, any any relatively good contact cement is good. Uh, I, I used to be the uh, I used to be a big uh, supporter of barge cement, but over time, barge cement is kind of hard to get and it's super expensive. So I found that I just kind of fell back on DAP, uh, contact, well, Wellwood contact cement. And that stuff's great because it's, it's just most contact cements, wherever you're... Uh, or access in different countries, you can get it. So it's a, a great source of, where's my foam scraps here? I'm sorry, guys, had something I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, it's a contact cement is a great form. That one and super glue are two of my favorites. But anyway, yeah, if anybody has any questions, guys, please ask. I am love to tell you anything you guys wanna know. Now, usually you let this stuff dry. I have a piece of, where's my scrap foam here? I have a cup. We have a question from Dean oh. Cross who asks, uh, is this contact cement without a mask? I'm not sure what that means. No, he means like it's a vapor content. What I do is I have a fan. I work in a heavy ventilated area, but yes, if you're working with contact cement in an enclosed area, if you're in your bedroom or in a garage or something like that, you definitely want airflow. Uh, I have a big shop, so I have a fan off camera blowing in my face. And also, I have my mask on, but it kind of inhibits my voice, so I didn't have it on today. But yes, you should always wear a, if you're working in uh, an enclosed area, you definitely want to work with a mask. And you'll find out really quickly, if you open up a can of contact cement in your house, everybody in your family is going to go, what's that smell? They're going to come looking for you. You'll get busted very quickly. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to stick this on the top like that. Still a little wet. Hold on, guys. Let me speed this up with a hair dryer. Oh, we got all the time in the world, Ted. Oh, Although I, I do see a lot of teeny weeny pieces that uh, <laughs> probably are. Well, a long yeah, time it's kind of. But the saving grace on this is that um, it's everything. It's very small. So we'll be, my mission is what we're going to do is I want to get this built and painted and complete by our whole show. All right, here we go. Now it's dry enough. We stick these two together like that. Got it. Now, here's our eye. Let me line this guy up just like that. Go centered. Making sure you guys can see this. I'm going to do is I line up the edge. So you guys can see this. 
I'm gonna, and just reach, carry it around all the way to the edge like this. This one's the about contact cement. It's just as soon as it makes contact, it is stuck. So it's not just a clever name. <laughs> no, it's all, it's real in advertising. Now, I just realized I could, one of the things I like to do when I'm putting foam to foam, sometimes you'll get a bit of a gap. And to prevent that from happening, just on the edges, apply a little contact cement on the edge as well too. Just like that. Just like that. And some scrap foam. You know, it's so funny, I have a big thing of scrap foam and I don't know, let me grab some real quick. While you're grabbing your scrap foam, we got a question from uh, Lord Crispy Nug. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent name, Lord Crispy Nug. What's up? How, how do you keep uh, motivation to keep working on cosplay and set work? Ah, uh, you know something that is, that's a really good question is that sometimes the motivation, it does, it gets, it does get a little hard. Um, but I find that you just sometimes you have to set yourself like a deadline or like that's one thing I've, I realized that it's happening with a lot of my friends and, and other cosplayers and builders and makers out there is that there's no deadline. There's no convention. There's nothing to build toward. So you kind of lose your steam. And so my play on this is that this is the perfect time to take advantage of the extra time you have. So I think it's best if you just try to set yourself a deadline for a project. Um, these patterns I've been doing like these cyberpunk patterns, they're done, but I still got some tweaking to do on them. So it just, yeah, sometimes, some days you just have to push yourself a little harder than others. So All is right. this pattern on your website or no? Uh, it's going to be, yes. Okay. Uh, everything I'm making, uh, this eyeball and the cyber jaw, I'll show you guys later. And uh, cyber eye, cyber jaw, uh, cyber military eyes, and then uh, and a cyber brain enhancement. I have all these patterns I'm doing for my, so you guys can see this coming together. Here's the, the eyepiece. All right, so now you see these holes here. I cut these guys out because I have some ribbed detail. This is craft foam. You guys can see it's a little bit of ribbed texture to it. And you can find these things online. Uh, textured foam, I got this on Amazon. And you take this guy like this and like, you place it behind it. And look at that, see? Makes it look all techy. That is awesome. You, you mentioned yeah. cutting. Uh, the, the comments are blowing up. I'm gonna try not to interrupt you all too much. But people are really interested in this. Uh, Marcus Veneer asks, what's the easiest way to cut the foam? Because obviously these were pre-cut. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, guys, the bees, things to cut the foam with, two things. Um, there's the standard box cutter blade. These guys um, that are great to have for cutting bigger pieces and for smaller pieces, a craft knife. These guys are great. Just a good old fashioned craft knife and the blades are great. Now this particular one Frisker made, uh, I have links for this on my website. If you guys go to my website, uh, I love the Frisker one because it's rubberized and you can hold it and it makes you allow to steer and cut. But um, these guys are great. But when you find the big blade, nothing dulls foam faster. It's crazy. Nothing dulls a blade faster than foam. So periodically I have a sharpener and you just kind of, once you cut, you can resharpen your blade. That's very frugal of you, Evil Ted. All right. Yeah, because I'm cheap. So <laughs> now we got this guy really cool. This is all lined up. Let's go. Let me make sure it fits pretty good in back here. Make sure it's fitting. And yeah, tell you what, let me just nick these corners off. They're a little high. Let me just chop these guys down a little bit. There you go. Just, yeah, cut that corner. Cut that corner. Sorry, guys. I just realized I'm not square. There, it's okay. okay. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some super glue in here it's fast. I'm going to run a little glue here on this edge and this guy on the tops. And Geeky Puffball, I see you in the uh, in the chats. You too, uh, Marcus. You can meet Evil Ted if you want. Just head on over to the meet and greet section. He's going to be doing a private group video tutorials live in video, like Zoom chats. So you can ask all your questions there as well. Yeah, definitely, guys. Please chat away. All right, there we go. See, look, now it's glued in. I just, one thing about foam that I really like, it's so easy, is the recessed detail. I like making things that have, uh, it's always good to stick things on the outside, but it's always good to cut and make recesses just to add some kind of like dimension to it. Now, there's our eyeballs coming together. So I do have some eight millimeter 
these eight millimeter half rounds. I got these from TNT. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these guys on to create this kind of like cable thing going on. So what we're going to do, same thing. We're going to get some contact cement. Tell you what, hold on. Let me grab another piece of scrap foam here. Oh, sorry, guys. While you're grabbing your scrap foam, uh, D Cross also asked, could you tell us what brand of blade sharpener you use? Oh, what blade sharpener? This is uh, uh, Crenshaw. Uh, the company is called Crenshaw. And again, everybody, if you guys want to know, just go to my website, eviltedsmith.com. And everything I use uh, on this video today is listed on that website. So go check it out. And links to his website are up on the cosplay page of Baltimore Comic Con Live. Look at that, guys. What? How, co how coincidence. All right, there you go. Get that. Now, great. So, so what I'm going to do is I take some contact cement. Sorry, guys. Too much. Oops. That is not Damn it. Hold on, guys. That's what, I get. That's what I get from moving stuff. Sorry. <laughs> Being alive, it's just setting. Okay, sorry, moving everything around. Now we're going to apply some contact cement to the for the half round details. Um, with contact cement, I always find the thinner you put it on, the better it is. The thinner it is, the faster it dries. So what I usually do is I'll dab some on here, like this. Then I'll take some scrap foam and just thin it out. You're like the Bob Ross of cosplay. <laughs> I mean, this is great. And this this is like, I could just, this is mesmerizing. Oh, thank you. It's like, uh, I was at a convention uh, in Canada and a young woman came up to me and I said, and I walked, she walked by my booth and she's like, oh my God, you're evil Ted. I said, yes. And we started talking. And she would just periodically stop and giggle. And she's like, your voice. I said, yeah. She goes, I build costumes for my kids for Halloween. She goes, I would have you playing in the background. I got so used to your voice. She's like, it's, she's like, it's very soothing. I said, well, thank you. I did not know I had that effect on people in my voice. So now we're going to apply the contact cement to the uh, eight millimeter pieces. But we want to add, I'm trying to try walk off some of this excess is that on the top of the eight millimeter piece, you wanna make sure you get contact cement on that too, because we're gonna make sure it makes contact on the, uh, the eye part. So again, I dab it, take my scrap piece and thin it out really fast. Ooh. And I'm getting glue all over my hands. Sorry guys, I should have some gloves on. Sorry, got that. Okay, set that aside. And we have three pieces that we're gonna add. So we're gonna put contact cement on all these parts. Same thing, do the top and the sides. Smooth it out. And again, contact cement, the thinner it is, the faster it dries. Does anybody have any questions? This is a great time to ask. I'm just gonna apply glue, let things dry here. I'm afraid to put this up because I don't know what ASMR means, but <laughs> going ape costumes says Ted, ASMR. Oh. Hey, it's going, guys, really quickly, uh, Going Ape Cosplay is a, a fellow cosplayer of mine. Uh, we are stream buddies on Twitch, uh, and she does amazing foam work. She did, uh, there's the video game Doom, and those monsters in Doom, these big skeleton creatures that had these giant guns in her back. Yeah, she, she made the whole costume. I was just like, good Lord, Becky. And she was like, go big or go home. I'm like, all right. So that's some words to live by. <laughs> that's the cosplay philosophy right there. Yeah, I I, I, would, I so desperately want to build a big costume someday. What stops me is I just have no place to put it. Like when I get a costume, I'm like, oh, we're going to put this damn thing. So, all right, now, as you can see, now I'm going to show you guys the context. And this is the longest one right here, this piece right here. So we take our piece here. And when you touch it, you make sure you touch the side of the, uh, the foam ring first, right? Come right in here like this and make contact. See, and that makes it stick right there. And then you follow down the side like this. Pow, like that. See, it kind of creates that kind of cool piping around the eye. And again, this is so cool because this stuff did not exist five years ago, all this foam trim. 
and things you could get and like piping and triangles and half rounds. Uh, when I started, you had to make all this stuff because it didn't exist. So now you can get this stuff. Is this stuff recyclable or, or what do you recommend for, for foam scraps? Oh, foam scraps. I, I kind of, I keep as much as I can cause for the little projects. So I'm making, make, making the contact here real quick. Make contact on the side. Um, it's foam is not unlike, unlike, not really like plastic. Oh, there's not much of recycling for it. So any piece, oh, I just, you know, realized, look at this guys. I put this on backwards. I flipped it around. I got the wrong one on. Hold on. Let's do this. I did. Hold on, guys. Um, sometimes if you stick something on and it's not supposed to be where it's supposed to be, you try to take it off, you'll destroy it. So what I do is I have a thing of barge thinner and I'll just take a little dab. And what this does is it reactivates the glue. Boop, comes right off. Wow. All right, so now I realized, hold on, it's the wrong one. So I have to put this guy Oops, it's taking all the glue off. Hold on, guys. I put too much on. Uh, set back. Hold That's on, I'm going to cool. take the hair dryer to this real quick. Oh, what's the best material to add to a homemade costume? Uh, I'm going to be tacked for Spooky Day, and I need Emperor Symbol. Wow, if I only eat trashy pizza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to add homemade costume. I mean, you can use anything. I'd like, when I started off as a kid, all I had access to was cardboard when I was a kid. It's like, that was it. Cardboard and then paper mache. And there's so many products now that you could just use poster board, cardboard. Um, you can get go to pick up some Mod Podge. This stuff is great. Like as acrylic based stuff and, it's, and very gently spread on a very thin coat on top of your cardboard. So therefore when you paint it, the paint doesn't soak into the cardboard. There's all these great things you can do now that you couldn't do when I was a kid. So you got access to all this great stuff. Um, now let's do this again and put the right part on. Okay, here we go. I got it now. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> got it. There you go. If you play this in reverse, it, it, it yeah, exactly. totally it'll, works. It'll, it'll totally work. See, there you go. Got that. You guys kind of see it coming together now. Love the half round stuff. The half round detail is my is my favorite. I love that stuff. Where can the can average cosplayer pick up like stuff like the half round and the the ridged? Oh yeah, again, uh, this is all stuff you can definitely. Um, I know they sell uh, at Abundance some stuff at Michaels, but the really uh, thin stuff you can order this stuff online. Uh, all of my half rounds and stuff I get, I just order uh, from TNT Cosplay Supplies. Uh, they have the eight millimeter half rounds. I really like using. All right, so we got this, guys. This is starting to come together. And then what we're going to do is take this piece right here, just for speed's sake, we're going to use some super glue. Now, there's certain points, like, people usually ask me, like, what's the point where you use super glue and where you use contact cement? If you're laying something down that you need to hold down, like a, like those little 8 millimeter pieces, it's easier to lay them down with contact cement than super glue. But for this guy, it's just a round plug. Super easy. Just tack that down with super glue. There we go. I, so you got that. I have to second what Dex Baker says. He said, I would have already made a slight error by now and given up <laughs> and swore vengeance. I'm with you, Dex. Oh, no. Guys, it's just it's just the thing about preparation and time. Uh, I'll let you guys in on a secret. This is my third time building this. Uh, when I make the pattern, I always make things three times. So especially if I'm making a pattern from my shop, I make, want to make sure everything works. So that's one of the things I need to do. Um, now that we have this guy on here, this part, oh, wait, hold on, guys, I'm gonna grab something really quick. Oh, don't worry, I'm gonna be back. Guys, just a reminder, all of uh, Ted's uh, patterns and stuff are all available at his website at evilted.com. Uh, There's links to those in the cosplay page here at BaltimoreComicConLive.com. That's right. Uh, uh, if, if you guys have not been to the Michael's Craft Stores yet lately, I have a line of molds I've been doing at the stores. And this one is my Cybertech molds. Focus, focus. Why does it always do that? Focus on them. It's focusing. There you go. Uh, this is my Cybertech mold. And this guy right here um, is this piece right here. And I like the shape. So I took some uh, liquid Sculpey and only dripped halfway to get this part, which is this part right here. 
and I liked it so much. I thought that'd be so cool on the cyber eye, right? So that's what we're going to do that. We're going to glue this guy onto that for our cyber eye. Um, I wonder if we do it like this. Ooh, I like, you know, like it. Yeah, let's do a, I like the angle better. Okay. Um, this so would be really good for a Borg cosplay. Right? Exactly. Uh, and, and what's a, in the cyberpunk world, everybody are he, still are humans, but they have all these enhancements on them. So I wanted to do like some guys that would have cyber like jaws and eyes and headgear. So it was the whole thinking of this. So that's why I want to make this thing very small in their profile. So you guys can just make this part and paint it up. There you go. Stick. Perfect. And now we got this. We're going to add some additional details. I like there's some flat places you can choose to leave smooth, but I always think it'd be cool to add a little bit more detail. So I have these pieces here. Let me make sure I have the right one before I glue it down and not repeat my my mistake. Let's see, let's see. That's this one right here. You never know where you need a button or right, exactly. a rivet or something. I, and I think, I think I always find that when you're building something, especially if you're going to paint it, it's like anything you can put under to add texture and things you can add different colors to. So once I get this glued on and I paint it, it, it allows me to have things that can accent with different colors of paint. I got to tell you, Ted, this is such a nice sigh of relief. Like uh, with Baltimore Comic Con, we've just been go, 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 go. And this is just a wonderful <laughs> breath of fresh air. Oh, fantastic. It's time the to entire catch con crew is just like, oh, I'm just going to sit and enjoy. Watch Ted, <laughs> Ted build something. Uh, yeah, well, again, again, everybody, Baltimore Comic Con, thank you so much for having me on. And you know what I really like is when this is all over with, I'd uh, love you guys to invite me to your convention because I would love to come and meet people in person. 2021. Just, It'll I be know. here before we know it. I know. We've got my fingers crossed, guys. I really do. All right, here we go. Got this. Lay it down. There. Now, see, see that little extra added oomph to detail just adds more to it. Um, now, just when you think we're done, no, we're not. This piece uh, is the eye, and this is the eye socket part we're going to glue on. Um, this goes on right like so. This is going to be the flange. Hold on. Make sure you get this on correctly. Like that. They're going to wrap up like that. Okay, good. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some contact cement. Tell you what, before we do that, let's take some super glue and add some rivet detail. Now, these are little pieces. Uh, the, the rivet details I'm using is... Uh, I took a piece of brass tubing and just cut out two millimeter foam. I have a sharp piece of brass tubing. Let's go just cut them out. And that's what I do for additional detail. I know a lot of people out there love using the googly eyes, the plastic googly eyes. Um, I find a lot of uh, people starting off to use those. But the problem with the googly eyes is that they're just thin shells of plastic. And if you're wearing a costume and you bump against something or rub up against something, they snap off sometimes. So you got to be careful. So I just prefer to make them out of just foam, make everything foam. And now for this guy right here, additional detail. Tell you what, let's not glue this on. Let's put this on first before we glue that on. So this is a perfect example for contact cement. Huge thank you to Baker here. It says this is easily the best put together virtual con. Thanks, Baltimore Comic Con. Oh, And awesome. thanks, Sal, for hosting the video. Yeah, big thanks to a Comic Pop Sal. We're uh, streaming live on his YouTube channel as, um, as well as many other YouTube channels. But huge, huge thanks to Comic Pop Sal. Yeah, and again, everybody, uh, for all the people out there, and the person asked earlier about staying motivated, uh, I agree, I understand, guys, it is tough right now, but is to have things like this, uh, virtual cons, and you need to get that con fix somehow, and I think the best way to do it is if any kind of virtual cons are going on, definitely try to check it out, sign up, see people. It's It does take the edge off, and I have friends that I like, but I can't see them because they're so far away, so we do a lot of Skyping and or was that Zoom and all that stuff? We just try to stay in touch. It's so great just to talk to people that are like fellow makers. It's just nice to catch up with. To let you know, guys, you're not alone in this. We're all going a little nuts. And I love conventions so much that every time I'd come home, I'd always have the post-con depression. Like, no, oh, that was so fun. Eh. And you look at pictures and you look remember that day how fun it was and you're sorry it ended. <laughs> I think everybody feels that from time to time, especially yes. now. Especially now, it really does. We're gonna we're gonna feel that on Monday, even even though it's a virtual con. It's been so just exciting, all the fun stuff we've been doing. It's like, oh man, let's let's do it again. 
All right, then I'm going to glue this on. So again, with the contact cement, I try to always apply contact cement of where I'm going to make the contact. I don't try to go too crazy with it because I find that it's just you only want to put the glue where you want to make the contacts on your foam. Just a habit I got into because sometimes when you're sealing things, you can see the glue. You can see the glue where it was, and especially making something like a, a cyber robot or something, you're going to paint it like a bright silver. Any indications anything indifferent that really shows up in silver paint so to cover my butt i just only apply the context of where i know it's going to stick and where i want it so everybody again thank you so much for your patience uh, and <laughs> no, this is this is fantastic all right guys you can see look at that slowly come together um okay um let me just bring a hair dryer in real quick. I, I apologize for the noise. I'm gonna do this off camera so it's not so loud. You know, for, the, for those people who don't know, I mean, you talk a lot about the hair dryer. Is that really just to expedite, expedite the uh, yes, um, drying I, process? Yeah, exactly. Um, I use hair dryers and sometimes you don't even need the hot air, just moving air really helps. D crosses. I can hardly wait to see how it's worn. Oh, I know fantastic. it's like it's like it's like walking in halfway through a Bob Ross episode. I <laughs> and I will, I will show you. It's like how is he going to make that look like water? I have no idea. We'll find out. Okay. Now that we have these pieces right here, we're going to uh, line up right there on the edge. Make sure. Oop. One thing about contact cement is once it makes contact, it sticks. So you want to make sure I get it lined up. Like that, it comes up. Wrap around the edge. You have a ridiculously steady hand. All right, and then we do this side. Ooh, there you go. Look at that. See there, you guys can see the eye socket come together. Now, this detail goes here. And again, I love this rib stuff. I love the rib detail. It's... Uh, the only thing that drives me crazy is they, they sell it in small sheets. So you can't get, you get these little like small, I get, I, hold on, let me grab an example real quick. I'll show you guys. They come, they're about this big. Ah, focus, focus. Uh, you guys can see right here. Oh, come on camera. There. Uh, you see this little dotty. This, this is one of the, this is textured foam with little beads on it. And I think it's awesome. I'm definitely going to use this for a future project, like, like a gun handle or a grip on a gun. But look at that. That's super cool. And again, um, guys go to go my amazon link if you do any shopping helps me keep making videos all right now let's apply some contact cement to this guy how are we doing on time we are at the bottom of the hour so we're gonna wrap it at about the 50 minute mark so we got about 20 more minutes. Okay. Hold on, guys. It's coming up. We're dangerously close. Yeah, I don't see much foam left on the table. Nope. So this is the third time you built this piece? Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's relatively new in your head. You're kind of yeah, figuring look, out as I, you go. When I make them, I, I make some. I get always oh, kind of cool, and I make it. And as the more I, I'll build it and look at it and go, oh, you know, it'd be cool. So I just I keep adding things or taking things away or changing something on it because what looks good on paper, then once you build it, you can physically see it. It makes you change your mind. So I always keep building stuff. Tell you what, while this is drying, hold for them. I'm gonna grab my finished one. So when we go to wrap it up, I can show you what it looks like. And guys, if you're just joining us, uh, Ted is going to be doing some one-on-one uh, -on -one meet and greets. Just head on over to the meet and greets section and use use the promo code FOAMGUY, F-O-A-M-G-U-I, for $10 off a ticket. He will He's doing Zoom chats with people, so you can ask your questions face-to-face, -face, show off your cosplay, get some tips and tricks from the professional. Okay, so now let's stick this guy on. Do, do, do. Sorry, make sure I'm staying camera for you guys. 
and line it up like this. All right, look at that. There is your wow. cyber eye. Um, now I have this done, I'm going to show you guys what this looks like when it's done, done, done on somebody's face. So let me position my camera ready. I uh, apologize for the shaky cam. It's going to happen real quick. So guys, bear with me. We get all prepped up. Oh, shaky cam. Why you got soundproofing on the ceiling and everything, Ted? <laughs> yeah, it's, it helps because I, I got a noisy shop. Okay. Let's see, my microphone stays in place. Shift things around for you guys. Oh, hold on. Move that microphone down. Stay put. The consummate professional. Yeah, I'm constantly, I still keep things out of frame. All right, guys, now here it goes. The cyber eye we just made, right? Ta-da. This is your, um, so wicked. again, now you're probably saying, how do you hold this up? Um, I have in the last, well, anyway, I'm just, instead of just talking about, I'll show you, hold on, stand by. I was totally going to ask you, how do you stick that to your face? Dun, dun. That is wicked. Now, guys, this is the, this is the, um, as you can see, it's a little bit different than what I make because I kept changing it. This is one of my earlier patterns I made, but I was testing um, a chrome paint called Spaz Stick. Uh, it's a, a model, like a model car paint. And uh, used, I painted this thing uh, black and then put a clear coat of gloss on it. I think it was uh, 2X, Rust-Oleum 2X clear on top of everything. And then when that dried, I airbrushed this uh, Spaz Stick chrome on it. And that's what gave it the chrome metal look to it. That is but cool. there it is. And what's holding it on, which is cool, it's clear elastic. You can buy clear elastic. It uh, comes in different thicknesses. And most women use it for fashion, hiding bra straps and stuff like that in uh, garments, uh, which we see like a dress that's open up. It's usually a clear elastic strap that holds everything together. And that's what this is. And I got the thinnest thing I could find on Amazon. So you just type in clear elastic on Amazon. You'll be able to find that as well. But there it is. That's my, my cyber eye. That is the coolest thing, man. Thank you. And uh, and to show you guys what else I had coming, uh, this is my um, it's my cyber jaw. Oh my god! Go. Oh. It goes on like this. Same thing. You do a clear elastic strap that goes over your head because I couldn't glue it to my beard. But uh, for you guys out there, but there's the uh, just to show you guys this is the cyber jaw, and the side details are more. This, again, this is from my Cosmolds, all detail pieces. I'm getting some serious Doctor Who vibes. Looking, at, looking <laughs> right. at that jaw, man. Yeah, and there's um, a lot of people from Venture Brothers. There's a guy, uh, Overbite, um, bon, Baron Von Overbite or something like that. He had a big thing. And you guys can buy it and, and, and make teeth and things. Like but uh, I'm getting these guys. I'm working. I'm hanging by me. Please hang in there. They're coming. I just got to get, <laughs> get the bugs worked out. So um, but they'll all be done soon. There it is. So today we made our, our cyber eye. You guys can just check that out. There it is. It's all just done out, out of craft foam. This is a two millimeter uh, and four millimeter and the eight millimeter half rounds and everything else and the textured foam, just all cut and detailed out. So cool. Um, I mean, we got, we got plenty of time. Uh, just kind of okay. curious, it's like yeah. what, what's your process in, in, in creating, you know, kind of starting from scratch, coming up right. with, with a with a with a design with a, a stencil, right? Like, how do you? Where do you begin? Uh, that's a good question. I always wonder myself. It's like I need it's like sometimes I just so when the game came out, uh, twenty uh, Cyberpunk. In the game, most people had like just like lines in their faces and little things here and there, and there's some people, some stuff like multiple eyes and stuff like that. And I wanted. I thought it's kind of cool, but the other thing is so streamlined that I thought it'd be interesting just to make something a little bit bigger and bulker. So I got on Pinterest. Uh, I'm a big junkie on Pinterest. So I'll look at images and designs, video games, animated. I'll just get on the internet and Google search like cyberpunk or, and I'll see things of other people's designs. Granted, they inspire me, but I don't 
verbatim don't want to do exactly what they do because it's their work. It's like, I just need to inspire me. So I'll, so most of all the cyberpunk stuff you saw today is just things I saw from other people, uh, designs from video games or illustrations and drawings and just take bits and pieces and then alter them and change them enough. And sometimes I'll find something I'm like, oh, that was super cool. And I'll try to find the image and I can't find it anymore. But I realize, well, I don't want to look at the image because then my fear is I'll just duplicate what I saw. So if I see something, it kind of reminds me. So I just kind of take the concept of what I remember seeing and build from there. Um, don't get me wrong, though. I do like building stuff from TV shows and movies. I just, I'm all excited about the uh, the new Mandalorian uh, show. Uh, I watched the first season, fell in love with it. And so I'm doing a, uh, right now I'm doing a heavy infantry Mandalorian uh, from that show. Nice. But my friend nice. 3D printed a helmet for me. So the helmet's all 3D printed, but I'm going to uh, do the rest of the body all foam. That's cheating, Evil Ted. The 3D printer is 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 is, is cheating. You're <laughs> yes, better. Sir. You're better than that, Ted. Here, here's <laughs> let me. Here's my and people. We've had a lot of heated debates about this, and I, I have a 3D printer. I got loaned to me by the company Matter Hackers, and I got it and put it in my house, and it's such a learning curve for me. Yeah. That by the time I would get something from it, uh, I I down I printed a gun from Fallout. It's a ten millimeter gun from Fallout, and it printed. And it took twelve hours to make this gun, and I realized by the time that gun was done printing, I could have made it out of foam. Done. Yeah. I mean, I could have made it out of foam, sealed it, painted it, and have it done in twelve hours. Yeah, I've seen it, your, it, YouTube, it, your YouTube it, shows, it, man. You turn stuff around in an hour that <laughs> would take days to three. Well, I I. To my defense, I trim a lot of stuff down. Like what I do is I stream, uh, I stream for like two, th I stream like about two hours on my streams. I'll stream and what I'll, my, my philosophy is this. If I'm building something on stream, I'll build it. And then when I'm not streaming, I, I put it aside and I don't build it until I start streaming. So I take all that and edit down. So yeah, I could build things in about two or three days, but um, the uh, some things take longer. The longest thing it takes days is pattern making. So the yeah. actual build time goes quick. Like I did this in no time. But making this took a while. So this took a day or two to work out the patterns. But when you build it, this is what makes foam so great, guys. It's so inexpensive and it's really available and you can get it anywhere. And you can make cool stuff for next to nothing. Now, if you were to go buy something like this, um, it's expensive. And as a kid growing up, I'm an old guy. I'll warn you guys. I, I saw Star Wars when it came out for real first time in 1970. 77, I was 14 years old. In 77, it came out my mind was blown. And the one thing that blew me away was like you guys, I saw something that inspired me and I wanted to learn how to build stuff so bad. And there was nothing available. There was no YouTube. There was no books. Hollywood was this whole hush secret, the, all the behind the scenes stuff, which is really available now was so mystery back then. And it took years of Hollywood to finally realize that we like seeing behind the scenes. We like seeing how things made. And as a kid growing up, they always kept thinking, well, if you show, it's like showing a magic trick. If you show how it's done, nobody's going to be into it and it's not true and people yeah. love it so that's so the idea that i just see this stuff so when i was 14 i was so frustrated and nobody was there to teach me and even when i got to california uh in the 80 uh, early 90s uh industry stuff was still kind of touch touching like you only knew something until you worked at a shop they wouldn't tell you until you got there so you started working and i'd learned techniques and things and so now anything i know or i've learned over the years I put in my videos or I teach you guys because I don't want to be the harbinger of secrets. You want to tell everybody, and this is a generation now where everybody's this friendly community is sharing things. It's great. So I make these videos for that 14 year old boy and me when I started. And so there's kids like they're like my age, if not younger, that saw something inspire them. They want to make their own stuff. I got, a, I got a million questions. I love to have you, but I got to go to the chat because we got about 10 minutes left. Um, go, go. In NES Master 80 says uh is there any other prep or uh can you just paint the foam great question talking about painting yeah you can um with this uh yeah you could totally just take uh what's that uh the uh effects paint like the plaid effects paint and just brush right on it if you want to uh my favorite one is the, the mod podge what i was going to do but we ran out of time i would just do a really thin coat of this with a brush and then go back in it with uh some tamaya paint i had all this stuff set up but it's you go i mean I wanted to build and enjoy myself and talk to you guys. And if I build really fast, 
then I would I would just would have focused and got it done and wouldn't be able to talk. No, this is great. Now you can feel people's <laughs> questions. D Cross coming back with another question. I like this. He said he made a Klaus. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Klaus is Black Panther um, arm right? cannon. Oh my God, sweet. A claws. I'm sorry. Is a claws, claws uh, arm cannon? Yes. Uh, I can't read so good. Uh, from insulation foam. Do you think I could have uh, make it out of two in regular foam? Yeah, um, the thing is, ah. yeah, insulation foam is this, uh, it's easy, it's, people like it, it's easy sandable, and, and you can shape things up, but it's not very durable. And I think what you do is, if you made something out of foam, and you got it all shaped up, uh, what I would do is make, wrap it in foil, and then put duct tape on it, and make a pattern off of that, and reproduce it out of foam. Therefore, you don't lose your work, because you put all that work in that shape and that thing out. Take that work you put in that shape, and then cover it with uh, foil and pat and tape, and uh, just you know, lay it all out, trace it, cut it all, you know, make some pieces, make pattern pieces, trace it on the foam, and build from there. Um, foam is just lightweight; it's more durable. Because the last of um, the only time I ever use insulation foam is to make a pattern. If there's something I can't really figure out, I'll carve a horn or a shape of a shoulder piece out of uh, insulation foam, and then cover it with tape and foil and pattern, and make a pattern off of that. So. Well, I, you know, there's so much stuff going on in the chat. This is absolutely, this has been fantastic, Dave. We still got a little bit more time. I wanted oh, to ask sure. you though, because when I first discovered you was on YouTube and it was your, your helmet build, which is right. one of your, one of your earliest, it's, earlier. It's, it's six years ago. It was my first one. What, like, explain to us sort of the growth of the Evil Ted channel and your popularity and your con uh, exposure after making that one specific it video. was it. It's something I never predicted. I uh, I saw Bill Duran's video and thought that's kind of cool. He's doing this thing, and then I saw in the cosplay community at the time. This can get, again, everybody. This is six years ago when a lot of stuff wasn't available back then. But um, people were buying. They were uh, making cool armor and then buying helmets. They would buy a helmet. They would or they would do Pepecura and coat it with resin. It would take weeks, if not months, to make a helmet. And I kept thinking, you guys put so much work into making these body armor costumes that why don't you just adapt the foam thing of building a body and build a helmet. And so I thought, well, I'll, there's a, I'll show them the technique I use. And so I just did a video to make the helmet pattern and it took off. And people were just like, what? Like the, the, I think what excited people was the curvature of the helmet. It's like you make, that's what excited me about foam fabricating and cosplay was that taking something that was once flat and making it curved and it's darting. It's it's like the same uh, fundamentals of making clothing. You you a flat piece of denim and you cut and dart and you make a pair of jeans. It's the same thing with a, with cosplay with a helmet. So, but I wanted to show people that if you pen everything out, cut it, and then heat form it. Do that was the trick with the helmet. You had to heat curl things first, and once you glued it and make, match uh, match up your registration marks, it popped it all together. And um, real quickly, just I'll grab. I was going to say, do you have any pieces uh, just laying around handy? Maybe you can show people of, uh, some of the things that they can find on your website some of the patterns because yeah guys if you haven't watched evil ted's uh channel on youtube definitely check it out if you just watch his one hour how to make a helmet video your, right, life, your life will change <laughs> this I is mean, a real base this is uh from, this is from voltron and this is again a pattern i have on my website this is free you guys can download this pattern and i have the links for the visor um i love voltron and the thing is i love the show and of course i think second thursday uh, the beginning of second season, they changed them and made the helmets uh, and clothes. So I keep meaning to make a pattern to add to this to make it more like the new season. But this is just a simple pattern. What I like about it is it almost looks uh, sort of, you could manipulate that and make oh, a really cool Magneto helmet. Exactly, and easily. And that's the big thing I tell people is like, always get my patterns. I, make, I keep them basic as much as possible so that you can buy them and alter them to your liking to make something new. Um, for example, this is my classic, uh, is I, did, I did a night helmet. That's all foam. Yeah, it's all foam. Uh, I sealed it with uh, Creature Cast. And this is that um, I did a clear coat, painted everything black, and I clear coated it. And again, everybody, there's a complete video on this. You guys want to see this? I have a whole video on this on my, web, on my YouTube channel. See, see. Oh, wait. None shall pass. <laughs> so, And then, of course, I just recently just did a video. Uh, I did a BlizzCon. I did my own version of a Space Marine guy. Um, this is a foam helmet. Oh my god! And uh, I bought. There's these things, and this is the perfect season, guys. It's Halloween. If you go to those spirit Halloween stores, they sell these chrome visors called the faceless mask. So what it is, you buy that, 
and you build a helmet and trace it and cut it and stick it on. And that's how I was able to make this. And yes, you can see through it. It's, it uh, screams Cobra Commander. Just those. Yeah. Uh, so you can see through it. That chrome face shield. I just get so many ideas when I go to your website and I look at these uh, these patterns that you have. Even your most expensive patterns are very, very cheap and very, very inexpensive <laughs> for people. A lot of them are free, but yep. most of them are like, you know, $5, you know, $6 for a cool pattern. Yep. True. My philosophy is this, is I try to make them, I don't want to price myself out, but what makes me price my patterns if people want to know how I do this is that it's the amount of time and work I put into something. Uh, I did the Fallout armor um, from the game Fallout 4. And making it was such an ordeal and put so much time and work into it. And you have, and then you have to take it and break it all down and you have to do all the directions and instructions. So like, I know how to build this stuff. So I don't have to really, re I just knock it out. But if somebody buys my pattern, I can't leave them in the dark. I got to show them, okay, you do this and these do this. And so you have to do the video on it. Plus you have to have printed instructions and, and all the stuff transferred. And I have a guy in Chicago, my dear friend, the modifier, he takes all my patterns and cleans them up and puts the instructions on them. So by, all this time said and done is a lot of hours out of my life. So I need to make money back from that. So that's pretty much how I make my living, but I try to keep them reasonably priced. So. I love this comment for uh, going back to a uh, going ape costume said, I would not be doing what I'm doing without Ted Ted's videos, period. It's so well, great to be able uh, to make what I make, to make you. what thank I want you. to make. I'm sorry. Thank you. And uh, again, she, I, I think like, I like her approach. Cause one thing that uh, going ape costume does is that she'll see something that inspires her. Like, oh my God, this is great. And she loves it. And she'll either find the artist, the guy that didn't ask his permission, hey, I'm gonna make this character, can I do it? And when you ask her, how are you gonna do it? She goes, I don't know. I just, I want it. So it's, she she challenges herself to pick something uh, and wants to do it, post a picture and tells everybody, here's what I'm making. And then she just kind of problem solves as you go forward. And that's what cosplay is, people. It's problem solving. It's just, when I build something, I have a general idea of what I wanna do and then like you just kind of, you kind of go. And I always tell people when you start off the costume, don't think about the whole costume, start with one part and work your way from there. It's so much easier to build. Well, Ted, this has been absolutely fascinating. One of the funnest panels of uh, we've, we've done all day. Uh, we got to wrap up, but I just wanted to ask people, you know, where can they find you? Obviously we can find links to all of your stuff on yes, the cosplay guys. page right here at Baltimore Comic Con Live. And I want to remind everybody, those meet and greets with Evil Ted, video one-on-ones, are available at the meet and greet section here at baltimorecomiconlive.com and use promo code FOAMGUY to get $10 off your meet and greet with Evil Ted. But anyway, where, where, where can people find you online? Oh, uh, guys, you can find me uh, on my website, uh, eviltedsmith.com. I also have an Instagram called evilted underscore channel on Instagram. Uh, I have a Facebook fan page, uh, Evil Ted, just named Evil Ted on my Facebook page. And I also have a start, I started a Facebook group called Evil Ted's Foam Fanatics. Uh, and what that is, is that when I would stream, people would ask me questions, but a lot of streamers that came in were also makers and they're really good. There's so many talented builders out there, guys, that I intimidate the hell out of me because I think they're amazing. Uh, and they're all there and everybody's there with knowledge to share. So if you're building something and you write to me, I, I have people that write to me every week and I can't get to you something because I have to, I only do my emails like once a week. And if you have something that needs to be solved quickly, if you go to Phone Fanatics and post and ask a question, you get a response pretty quickly because it's international, it's 24 hours. When you join the phone, all I ask is that there's two questions. Yeah, answer the two questions. When you join, answer the two questions you're in. And all I ask too is people be nice to each other. In this crazy environment right now, there's a lot of trolls and we just have no, toler no toleration for trolls. So just as long as you're in there and you be nice and respectful to each other and post links, it's great. Great. Well, Ted, thanks a lot for being here. We really, really appreciate it. Can't wait to meet you in person at Baltimore Comic Con maybe in 2021. I know. I got my fingers crossed, people. Let's do it. I know, guys. We'll stick around. We got the uh, the Tom Brevoort game show. I have a quick costume change. I got to get into my uh, my game show host costume real quick. So we'll be back in about nine minutes. Um, thanks again, Evil Ted. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. All right. See you guys later.